Good day everyone. It is nice to see you again. Welcome to our any learning as our learning community. Lesson 3. Multiple Organ Dysfunction Syndrome, or MODS. Medical Management. Prevention remains the top priority in managing multiple organ dysfunction syndrome. Elderly patients are at increased risk for multiple organ dysfunction syndrome because of the lack of physiologic reserve and the natural degenerative process, especially immune compromise. Early detection and documentation of initial signs of infection are essential in managing multiple organ dysfunction syndrome in elderly patients. Subtle changes in mentation and a gradual rise in temperature are early warning signs. Other patients at risk for multiple organ dysfunction syndrome are those with chronic illness, malnutrition, immunosuppression, or surgical or traumatic wounds. If preventive measures fail, treatment measures to reverse multiple organ dysfunction syndrome are aimed at 1. Controlling the initiating event, 2. Promoting adequate organ perfusion, and 3. Providing nutritional support. Nursing Management The general plan of nursing care for patients with multiple organ dysfunction syndrome is the same as that for patients with septic shock. Primary nursing interventions are aimed at supporting the patient and monitoring organ perfusion until primary organ insults are halted. Providing information and support to family members is a critical role of the nurse. It is important that the healthcare team address end-of-life decisions to ensure that supportive therapies are congruent with the patient's wishes. Promoting communication. Nurses should encourage frequent and open communication about treatment modalities and options to ensure that the patient's wishes regarding medical management are met. For patients who survive multiple organ dysfunction syndrome, it is essential that they be informed about the goals of rehabilitation and expectations for progress toward these goals, because massive loss of skeletal muscle mass makes rehabilitation a long slow process. A strong nurse-patient relationship built on effective communication provides needed encouragement during this phase of recovery. Promoting home and community-based care. Teaching patients self-care. Patients who experience and survive shock may have been unable to get out of bed for an extended period of time and are likely to have a slow, prolonged recovery. The patient and family are instructed about strategies to prevent further episodes of shock by identifying the factors implicated in the initial episode. In addition, the patient and family require instruction about assessments needed to identify the complications that may occur after the patient is discharged from the hospital. Depending on the type of shock and its management, the patient or family may require instruction about treatment modalities such as emergency administration of medications, intravenous therapy, parenteral or enteral nutrition, skin care, exercise, and ambulation. The patient and family are also instructed about the need for gradual increases in ambulation and other activity. The need for adequate nutrition is another crucial aspect of teaching. Continuing care. Because of the physical toll associated with recovery from shock, patients may be cared for in a long-term care facility or rehabilitation setting after hospital discharge. Alternatively, a referral may be made for home care. The nurse also assesses the adequacy of treatments that are continued at home and the ability of the patient and family to cope with these treatments. The patient is likely to require close medical supervision until complete recovery occurs. The home care nurse reinforces the importance of continuing medical care and helps the patient and family identify and mobilize community resources. Thank you for listening. Have a good day, and be safe. Agyamanak.